At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Ms. Haley Duke and Katherine Hicks to lead us in the singing of the national anthem. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light one so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the together in this ceremony to celebrate the graduation of Coldwater's class of 2010. For some, this day may have been a long time coming, but for others, it may have happened too fast. No matter the feeling, today we are honoring those who have worked hard to get here. Through our many years of education, we have had countless challenges to face and numerous people to thank for overcoming them. Family, teachers, coaches, and community members, as well as fellow class and schoolmates. A large thank you is owed to these people for their efforts to help us. Looking back over the years, there were many things that have been memorable as we've moved forward in our education. In elementary school, while we were all cold water cardinals, we were also Jefferson Rockets, Edison Eagles, Lakeland Blue Jays, and many more. And who can forget a great thing called recess? With the freedom it brought, and if you were Edison, the jealousy of other elementaries because you were right next to Kids' Kingdom. After elementary school, we moved up to the middle school where many of us met for the first time. This was both exciting and scary because it was something new that we had never experienced before. With this move came many things like putting on the hits and our first school dances as well as being chased down the hall by Mr. Lake with his cane. It was also during this time that it seemed there were an awful lot of teachers retiring at the end of the year they had us. Pure coincidence, I'm sure. Before we knew it, we were at the end of our eighth grade year and preparing to move on to high school. The transition to high school went pretty smoothly after a little time of needing to get used to the hallway traffic pattern and using maps to find our classrooms. We were quickly introduced to the fun and stress of homecoming week. The dress up days and daily events were great, but the uncertainty of finishing the float the night before homecoming could sometimes be nerve wracking. However, every year by the end of the week, things worked out and we had something to be proud of. Like our freshman year when we beat the other classes and being the loudest at the pep assembly and beating the sophomores and juniors for overall placement. High school also brought things like the snowball dances and being confused because salt was no longer acceptable in the lunch lines and our leaky roof was supposed to be fixed. Junior year brought the, both the stress of planning prom and the fun of being able to, att <coughs> sorry, to attend, as well as beginning to decide our future plans. Finally, it was time for senior year. With the privilege of being the oldest students in the school, and the craziness of completing college applications and working to finish our time at CHS. We completed our final homecoming, winning the pep jug in the year of its return, and making great memories in the process. 
The year progressed and we continued to attend our last events as high school students. At last it was May and we were attending our last prom, taking stressful AP tests and generally trying to prepare for our last day of school. The day has now come and gone and we have at last reached our graduation day. It has been a long trip with many bumps along the way, but it has also been a great opportunity for great memories and lasting friendships to be made. We are about to become alumni of Coldwater High School. Finally, the class of 2010, the ones the teachers all the way through said were the most social class they had ever had, have reached our goal of graduating. It is hard to believe that we will no longer be seeing each other walking the hallways of CHS on a daily basis, and then in a few months, many of us will be leaving for college. Our time at Coldwater is just about over, but it has been great while it has lasted. Congratulations, graduates. We have finally made it to our graduation day. Thank you. Hello, fellow students, teachers, staff, family, and community. I'd like to start off by saying, congratulations, we did it. As I stand here in front of you, I'd like to speak for the entire class of 2010. About four years ago, we entered Coldwater High School not knowing what to expect. And here we are today, leaving CHS with so many memories and outstanding education and lifelong friends. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for our fellow faculty and advisors. I'd like to dedicate this speech to this outstanding group of people. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to our elementary teachers. They were there to teach us the fundamentals of our learning, from reading and writing to shaping us into wonderful little people. They prepared us for the next step in our future, middle school. I thank you. Not only do our middle school teachers deserve a thank you, but a Tylenol invocation as well. They were there for us through all the early teen drama. They also introduced us to homework. We thank you. The next step on the path into the future is the Big Bad High School. These are the teachers who formed us into the young adults you see today. They helped guide us through the rights and wrongs of life, yet let us know that making mistakes is okay as long as we learn along the way. We thank you. Although teachers make up the majority of the faculty and advisors, there are still many more. Next, I'd like to thank the bus drivers for the transportation to school and back and the long sporting events that go on for hours on end. We thank you. I'd like to thank the cafeteria staff. They have provided us with more than just food. They've dealt with our obnoxious talking in lines and let us slip even when we are $10 in debt. But don't worry, I won't tell. We thank you. Next, I would like to thank our amazing coaches and athletic director. These people have taught us more than just how to play sports, but have taught us discipline and work ethic. Our coaches have pushed us physically and mentally in many situations, especially our schoolwork. We thank you. I'd like to say thank you to the janitorial staff for keeping the school clean, safe, and healthy. We thank you. I would now like to thank our outstanding motherly secretaries and on our top of their game principals. They are the ones who help keep our heads on straight along with all the behind the scenes work we tend to take for granted. We thank you. Last but not least, I'd like to thank the 2010 class advisors. They have been there for us for the past four years, even when they probably wish they weren't. If it wasn't for our high school, if it wasn't for them, our year wouldn't be as organized and as fun. We thank you. Even though our high school career has come to an end, our future has just begun. And we, class of 2010, have this amazing group of people to thank for that. We thank you. The bond that links your true family is not one of blood, but of respect and joy in each other's lives. These words were spoken by Richard Bach, and they are utterly true. 
I would like to, on behalf of our entire class, say thank you to all you parents. By parents, I mean mothers and fathers, but also the people there without the official title. So thank you to all of you aunts, uncles, grandparents, and anyone else who was there on our first day of kindergarten and every other milestone. It is because of you that we have made it this far. It is because of your unwanted discipline that we are here today. When we were two, we threw temper tantrums. When we said a bad word at six, you were there. When we wouldn't clean our rooms at 12, when we skipped school at 16, at 17, and maybe at 18, you were there. Okay, so maybe discipline didn't work out every time, but hey, it worked most of the time. You always said that punishing, punishing us hurts you more than it hurt us. We never actually believed you. Now in retrospect, we can see that it was hard for you too. But thanks, it is because of this tough love that we are the kind of people we are today. You gave us so much more than tough love though. You gave us support at every age, from when we died on the Oregon Trail, to when we broke up with our middle school significant others that we had been dating for a whole week. You've been there at every sporting event at every band and choir concert, at every play. And while we might not have said it, we did appreciate it. Thank you. You pushed us to succeed when we didn't think we could pass that dumb Petsco test, when we thought we would die taking the ACT. Look, we survived. You were there when we didn't want to go to practice, and when we did not want to do our homework. You were always there. Thank you for everything. We are smart, we are capable, and we are ready to be the functioning members of society that you have taught us to be. So this day is not only about us, but about you as well. Thank you. Thank you. There are also parents that we wanted to take an opportunity to thank that sat in this year for some parents across the world for their children to have the opportunity to come not only to the United States to, but to experience CHS this year as well. And we wanted to take just a moment to not only thank those of you in the community who have taken in these children as your own this year, but some of them also have some very special guests with them that have made the trip to this ceremony to celebrate with them. So for our foreign exchange students, when I call your name, if you would please stand, I'd appreciate that as we introduce you, your host family, and some of the relatives that may have been able to make the trip here to celebrate with you. Alanud El Wikrian from Jordan. Host family, Marlon and Patricia Metzger. And here today with Alanud are her uncles. Anne Rauschdorf from Germany. Hosted by Mike and Dawn Vozar. Camilla Schau de Mosa from Denmark, who stayed with Terry and Annette Safransky, and whose mother, father, and brother were all able to come today to celebrate. David Prada Severa from Mexico stayed with George and Victoria Hogue. Eva Marie Kohlkebeck from Germany stayed with Steve and Jill Senek this year. Fat Lam from Vietnam stayed with Andrew Bracey and Susan Creel Bracey this year. Friedrich Halslia from Denmark stayed with Jeff and Michelle Pierce and his father is here today. Luis Villarangel from Brazil stayed with Scott and Karen Lauder, and his mother is here with him today. 
Laura Rodriguez from Spain stayed with Chris and Sue Pierce. That's the official Spain hand clap. <laughs> Luisa Bormio from Brazil stayed with Steve and Lisa Monroe. Marika Gadaman from Germany stayed with Kim Farst and is here today with her mother, father, and sister. Mai Inoue from Japan stayed with Eric and Marsha Metheny. Also staying with Jeff and Michelle Pierce was Mai Nok Pham from Vietnam. Oliver Aranciba A Flores from Bolivia stayed with Mark and Angel Bond. Pa Fun Riti Shaya Pishone from Thailand stayed this year with Mark and Jennifer Sexton. I think that was close. Pamela Arrico from Ecuador stayed with Chad and Marsha Curtis and is joined today by her mother and father. Paula Madeira from Brazil stayed with Chris and Amanda Burke. Also with Mark and Jennifer Sexton was Xiao Chin Lai from Taiwan. And also with Scott and Karen Lauder, here today with her mother and father, is Vivian Klingner from Germany. And brother. And finally, from Kuwait, with Alan and Amy Fenner, we have Zaina Shemzeldin. Thank you so much to your host families. We really appreciate your ability to bring them into your homes and treat them as your own children. I know the bonds have been created. Thank you parents and relatives who have been able to come to the United States to celebrate this day with us. One of the things I would think you all want is a nice picture of your son or daughter getting their diploma this year. The Academic Boosters Club of CHS is providing a free photo from Classic Portraits and Mr. Stan Clayton this year to all graduates' families. They can pick those photos up here at the high school on Thursday. So with that, I do ask during the time where your child may be getting their diploma to please give this area for them and for Mr. Clayton to get that photo, which will be given to you to document the event. The next honor I have is to introduce some of our academic levels of achievement. And in your program, you notice that we have listed students in various levels of GPA performance. I'm going to simply ask those students in these various categories to please rise to be recognized. Graduating in the senior class this year as cum laude, would those students please rise at this time for applause. That would be the brown colored tassels we gave you last Friday. Okay. Okay, we are gonna work on that one for next year. Slightly higher, magna cum laude, wearing the silver tassels, if they could please rise to be acknowledged. And then our final category, the highest graduating level, the summa cum laude.
One more group to stand up, our presidential scholars. They earned this by their GPA, their ability to take and perform in courses here at CHS. So I ask that all of our presidential scholars please stand at this time. And then finally, we have our senior scholars, which is the highest ranking category of our graduates from CHS. I'm going to call them by name. By name, if you would please rise. Kayla Dove. Haley Duke. Morgan Gruner. Amy Hemker. Cody Litley. Abigail Lynch. Zaid Mosen. Evan Safransky and Gada Zanzami. Congratulations to all of you. At this time, it's a great honor to introduce to you our top three students in the graduating class of 2010 for an opportunity to speak to you as graduates. First off, with our salutatorian, Miss Abigail Lynch. Class of 2010, over the past few years, we have proven to be one of the most unique classes to walk through Coldwater High School. We have been told countless times that we are the most talkative class that our teachers have ever had, or in the words of Ryan Sheets, that we are hyper-social. Apart from earning many of us Barney time in sixth grade, this has endeared us into the hearts of our educators, even if it has caused them a major headache. Similarly, we have also been one of the most argumentative and questioning classes. When we hear something we believe to be wrong or are told something that we are unfamiliar with, we are not let it, willing to let it pass by without an inquiry. This, although an obnoxious quality, has led us to discover new ideas and to find and fix flaws in our education and thus improve it. Another dominating feature of our class is our abundance of spirit, which was more evident than ever on our class trip to Detroit. At every location that we went, through dancing, cheering, or waving, we made others who weren't a part of our group smile. Though it may be only natural to us, this enthusiasm has improved the days of others by sharing our happiness with those who may not have any of their own. One last quality that our class possesses is a willingness to step up and help others, which we have demonstrated by organizing benefit dinners, car washes, and talent shows for various causes. No matter what the event, there have always been classmates willing to donate time and effort. These are the characteristics which we need to retain as we leave high school and take the next step in our lives. These traits, the ability to communicate successfully, refusing to accept what is given without a challenge, curiosity, bubbling enthusiasm, and a willingness to help, are what will continue to set us apart from others. And if they are successfully employed, we'll evolve our class into the next enterprising generation. Class of 2010, we have reached the end. But if we want to, we have the potential to make it into so much more. Thank you. This year we have two valedictorians in our class with identical GPA values. The first of those two people I'd like to introduce to you is Mr. Cody Litley. Congratulations, class of 2010. You've made it. Take a deep breath and enjoy yourselves. You've actually made it. For more than a decade, you have diligently attended your classes. Thirteen years and multiple dozens of teachers after that fateful first day in kindergarten. You and your friends are now poised to take that great step into the next phase of your lives. That's 22 semesters and six trimesters. Nearly 120 months. 515 weeks. 
2,340 days, 1,600,000 uh, hours, or excuse me, 57,600,000 seconds. Now, tell me, after all this time in school learning everything from geography to trigonometric calculus, how are they able to convince every single one of you to spend more than $80 on a dress and a piece of cardboard to wear in your head so you could parade around in lines in front of all these people? <laughs> but don't worry. For all these countless hours slaving away, studying for tests, memorizing mathematical theorems, listening to lectures, and completing your homework at 2.30 in the morning, you will be given a 10 cent piece of paper stamped with a design that somebody found on the internet. And the best part is, they even put your name on it, free of charge. However, believe it or not, you did not dedicate 13 years of your life for a ceremony and a fancy certificate. As fun as I think it may be, I know that this piece of cardboard and rope I am wearing on top of my head do not even come close to the value of what I have put in between my ears. You, my classmates, you have been given a gift coveted by millions around the globe. You have been given an education. You have been given an ability to go out into the world and to make a life for yourself. You have been given a gift which cannot be labeled with any arbitrary monetary value. Your families are extremely proud of you. You can't imagine the sense of relief they're experiencing. This would be a most opportune time to ask for money. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. <laughs> and our second valedictorian, Ms. Gata Zamzani. First of all, I'd like to welcome every parent and community member that's joining us today. I would also like to congratulate my class, the class of 2010, for reaching this point. It has been a long and difficult 12-year journey. It has been an especially challenging journey for me because as an immigrant, an Arab American, a Muslim, and an ESL student, it was a dream for me to stand and deliver a speech as valedictorian like I'm doing today. I can remember... I can remember the first day of school when I walked in the classroom and found all the eyes staring at me. It wasn't easy because not only was I a new student, I was a foreigner. I can recall and hear my classmates laughing at me when I tried to speak English. No words could illustrate the pain that I felt at that moment, but I promised myself that I would work hard and show my classmates that I could be just as good as they were. <laughs> to a certain extent, I have reached that goal, thanks to my first grade teacher, Mrs. Tucker. When Mrs. Tucker welcomed me to a classroom with a hug, I felt that there would be some supportive people who would guide me in the new world that I had been placed in. Her kind smile and her simple acts of encouragement reassured me and told me that things would be all right. Every time she patted my back on a completion of a puzzle or worksheet, I felt that there would be hope that I would be just like my, my classmates. Mrs. Tucker didn't have wings nor a wand like the typical heroes, but she had a big heart. Mrs. Tucker set the foundation for my success and will forever remain one of my heroes. You might be wondering who my other heroes are. Believe it or not, it's my parents. I've never thanked my parents directly for all their support and encouragement, but I thought that today would be an appropriate day to do so. Thank you, Mom and Dad. 
Although neither of my parents were college graduates, they're exceptional parents. They have been my cheerleaders with the pom-poms, of course. Without them, they have, they have been my source of motivation for the past 12 years. My father told me once that he saw himself in me. I don't think he realized it, but these words made me determined to become successful because although I had problems, such as the language barrier and acceptance, I had the opportunities that he didn't. As a low-income family, my parents couldn't offer me much in monetary value. But as loving parents, they provided me with the support, encouragement, and determination like no other. Because of my mother, father, and Mrs. Tucker, I was able to transform from an illiterate girl to a, sec to a successful young adult that's willing hard to set a good example. Yes, there is still a place for the American dream as long as one is willing to work hard and has great people to back them up in the path that they choose to follow. Please allow me to take this opportunity and say a few words of thanks in Arabic because the people that I would want to thank will not understand in English. اسمحوا لي أخذ هذا الفرصة وأشكر الوالدة والوالد وعمي علي الخوبري لدعمهم وتشجيعهم والحضورهم هذا الحفل اسمحوا لي أهدي نجاحي إليهم وإلى كل عربي أنا بحمد ربي أنا أقدرت أتفوق على ميتين شخص وطلع الأولى وأكون مثال مشرف لبلدي في عالم الغربة دورنا كمغتربين سواء جينا للعمل أو للعلم هو أن نكون اسم شرف لبلدنا أخيرا أحب أشجع كل الشخص يعمل مجهود ما كان سهل علي أني أوصل لهذا الدرجة بس تعبت وسهرت ودرست والحمد لله نجحت ما في شيء مستحيل إذا الإرادة قوية وإذا الأهل مساندين الشخص شكرا إليكم Thank you for your patience. And I didn't swear. Congratulations, that is such an amazing story. You are inspiration to people. Okay? take this opportunity to give a big sincere thank you to the community from the senior class of 2010. Everyone has been so supportive of us through our four years of high school and we couldn't ask for a more helpful community. Not only the faculty and teachers have been great, but even those who don't have children here at CHS. Our school has strived a lot further because of your support and donations. The Coldwater Community Sunrise Rotary has been very generous to us, as well as the Coldwater Boosters, local businesses, Walmart, Hungry Howies, and many other groups and people. There have also been so many anonymous donators that we need to thank. Coldwater High School Sports, Arts and Theater, Band and Choir, Yearbooks, and the school itself have come a long way thanks to everyone out there. The Coldwater Gymnastics team raised enough money and received donations to get their spring floor. The baseball field has been updated and it's one of the top fields in Michigan. There has been a lot of donations towards the softball field. The basketball team has some nice updated equipment like Noah and the shooting gun that were bought with the help of the community. This year, an anonymous donator just bought new warm-ups for the Coldwater Girls soccer team. Woo! Woo. <laughs> Golf has had a lot of support, and there have been many other helpful people who come and support the Cardinals. That don't, they don't even have a child on the team. It really does make a difference, and it's extremely helpful. Our arts and theater has always been well supported, and there is always a good crowd with all of the plays. The band and choir is greatly appreciative for all the support they have received. 
So many people have donated scholarships to people who need them, which is very generous. There are so many events the community participates in that makes everything better and a lot of fun for us. We couldn't say thank you enough. Without the community, Coldwater High School wouldn't be half the school it is. So thank you. Good afternoon. This, 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 good afternoon. This afternoon, I am here along with last year's recipient, Jordan Ness, to present the John Vance Award. John Vance was a 1975 graduate of Coatter High School. We believe he represents the highest standards of character and achievement to which all students should aspire. He was not just an athlete, nor an honor student, nor a student leader. He was all of these. On May 25th, 1982, John lost a long, year-long battle with cancer. In memory of John Vance, we, the faculty and staff of Coldwater High School, honor Cassandra Stella Kunzalek, who represents the high standards that John exemplified. Congratulations. We have uh, come here today to celebrate the help celebrate the new beginning for the uh, class of 2010. And, but in doing so, we also want to take an opportunity on behalf of the Coldwater Community Schools to thank you for your support of the school system and the uh, students of the class of 2010 for the past 13 years. Additionally, we need to recognize some people that work behind the scenes but who also share the same joys and sorrows that the students experience yearly and that's the Board of Education. Would members of the board uh, stand as I introduce them, please? First, we'll start with Rick Gates, trustee, Jeannie Milnes, trustee, Ed Lake, trustee, Ron Smith, secretary, Jim Hescock, treasurer, William Rogers, vice president, and Robin Idavidson, president. Thank you very much. And now for the moment you've been waiting for. As the uh, superintendent of Coldwater Community Schools, I certify these students have met the standards and requirements as set forth by the State of Michigan and the Board of Education for their personal certificates and diplomas. It is now my honor to present the graduating class of 2010 to Board President Robin Iveson. Parents, on behalf of the entire Coldwater Community Schools staff and the Board of Education, we just want to thank you for sharing these wonderful children with us the last 13 years. I'm so excited for them as they end this chapter and start on a new chapter of their lives. As we go through handing out the diplomas, you'll notice I have personal relationships with some of these students. I hope I don't block Mr. Clayton's pictures with a few hugs. I feel as someone who's a almost relative to some of these students, it's an honor and a privilege that I'm allowed to give each and every one of the class of 2010, with a few exceptions, their diplomas. Thank you. It's a great honor that we will now be introducing to you the graduating class of 2010.
Joshua Michael Roddy. Jordan Asher Harmon.
Mary Elizabeth Moyer. Kara Stefan Holly. Mai Inoue. Marika Garima. Camilla Nicole Sheldamosa. David Rada Cervera. Jordan Terrence Edward Pickering. Trevor Joshua Bella. Neil Thomas Hawkeye. Mackenzie Kaiser. <laughs> Nikki Sue Clark. <laughs> Kelsey Ann Eichler. <laughs> Samantha Rose Souls. Kristen Elizabeth Garrett. Amanda Lynn McFarland. Emily Elizabeth Harvey. Ryan Nicholas Thompson. Elaine Truman. Caitlin Jean Eichler. Carrie Jean Steele. Vivian Lara Klingner. Yolanda Marie Lazano. Kayla Lynn Malone.
Paula Rodriguez Diaz. Zaina Shems.
Jillian Crist. Megan Elizabeth Jean Holcomb. Abigail Margaret Fulmer.
Samantha Marie Brown.
Ethan Ryan Cooney. Thank <laughs> you. 
66 years ago today, thousands of Allied troops moved forward with a mission on the beaches of Normandy. They had enormous obstacles in their way, yet they moved forward with one goal in mind, victory. For many years now, you have also been moving forward, sometimes through tough obstacles of your own and adversity, making the decisions the best you could that would help you reach this particular goal that we celebrate today, your graduation. The choices were not always easy, and the choices may not have always been the correct ones. But I'm proud to say that through it all, I think you have learned the lessons over the years that will help you leave the halls of Coldwater Community Schools with the ability to set and accomplish your future goals. You are now part of the cardinal spirit that lives in this community. As you move on in life and face your, face your future challenges, remember to keep a little of that Askawawa war cry and cardinal determination in your heart to help get you through. You can and you will accomplish great things. At this time, to signify the passing over and transition from your high school career into what you will choose to do past this day, please move your tassels from the right to the left side of your caps. And congratulations, class of 2010. Welcome everyone for coming to spend our last day with us before we take the big plunge into the adult world. It is an honor to be here today standing in front of all of you on the behalf of the 2010 graduating class. Almost better than that though, I'm the last speech of the day. Woo! Also, I would like to advise everyone that I have taken the initiative to securely pin my cap down to avoid the random malfunctions that took place during the convocation speech. But I'm not here to talk about myself. I'm here to talk about the future and be sort of a tour guide to success and the basic common sense skills that everyone lacks from time to time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Our first stop, graduation cliches. Today, I'm not going to tell you that we are free after this ceremony. If you thought that the librarian, Ms. Clevenger, was tough, try the IRS. They mean business. At the same time, though, try to embrace our new restrictions that make our society safer in the long run. But if they restrict the First Amendment, or any of our constitutional rights for that matter, be active and learn how to make a difference by actually helping to change the inadequate laws and by not being an ignorant citizen. I'm not going to tell you that you can do anything you put your mind to. The last time a six-year-old boy had a dream to fly and put on a Superman costume, Newton's law of gravity did take place and it was not a pretty sight. You should still dream big though and work hard to achieve your goals. We can't all be Cody Litleys and God is the Zombies, but we can definitely try. I'm not going to tell you that from now on, we have to be adults all the time. I would be the first person to tell you that I'm very immature, even at the age of 18. But I'm sure many would agree that they feel the same way about themselves. But as much as I think there are many times to act goofy and childish, there are also many things in our journey that require focus and maturity. Either way, you still need to take responsibility for your actions. This leads me to our next part of the tour, the 10 Commandments of 2010. Number one, don't be afraid to be an individual, even if it's as unique as playing the trombone with your foot. Number two, if you knock an older woman down a hill on accident during an intense game of football, help her up and buy her a new popcorn too. Number three, always stand up for what is right and for others who don't have a voice. If you don't, who will? Don't be a sheeple. Number four, 
Abide by the three H's. Be honest, helpful, and healthy. Be strong enough to avoid any kind of addictions and always be able to find and hold close the true values in life. Number five, do what makes you happy. Even if it's dressing up in a studly silver suit and dancing for money for students on a senior trip, go for it. <laughs> Number six, always try to compromise. Don't be headstrong and disagree just because you can. Number seven, learn to laugh at yourself. You are, in fact, your own biggest critic. Number eight, if you're struggling in life, whether it involves relationships, financial stability, or health problems, be strong and hold your head up high. Even if it's shape, you're beautiful. Number nine, always remember where you came from and the people who brought you up. Let's take a minute to thank them and show you your appreciation. Woo! And as Cody said, this is definitely the best time to ask for money. I'm just kidding, but honestly, they have seen you at your best and at your worst. They are the reason you are sitting here today in these lovely polyester gowns. Number 10, the golden rule. Treat others how you want to be treated. Following this step, step will solve more problems than it causes. The elementary school teachers know what they're talking about. They also taught us to never eat glue, which has saved us from many step, stomach aches over these about 18 vigorous years. Our next and final stop, the future. Now would be the best time to wipe the drool from your cheek and to wake up your neighbor on your way out, remember commandment number two. If you knock, to, knock an older woman over, help her up, and don't forget to compensate for her loss. Class of 2010, it has been an honor serving as your class president and joining you on this spontaneous ride. I wish you the best of luck towards your future. Now let us rise up before this big world full of amazing opportunities and show them what we got. Together we shall carpe diem and seize the day! We'll now have the exit of the class of 2010, our most recent graduates from CHS, to the playing of our fantastic CHS band.